Jason. Welcome back to Ben Rants. And when I was a kid, game developers finished games before releasing them. Oh boy, I've been eagerly awaiting the chance to tear this one apart. So I, and a good majority of the public, found out about Christopher Nolan when he unleashed his version of Batman on the world. And apparently, I'm in the minority of thinking these movies are overrated, insulting, pretentious, wordy slaps in the face of Batman. It's no secret that I'm a huge Batman fan. If you dive deep into my inner childhood psyche, you'd find that the three main things that made up my childhood, cartoons, Godzilla, and Batman. Whether I was watching the 60s Batman show with my dad, or watching Cartoon Network's reruns of Batman the Animated Series, or watching Batman Beyond on Kids WB, the Cape Crusader has definitely been a big part of me. As for the comics? Pfft, who the hell reads comics anymore? So, after the live-action cartoon that was Batman and Robin, it took Warner Brothers eight years to finally tackle Batman again. With director Darren Aronofsky being shoved to the side and no one being picked over him. And to add insult to injury, Joss Whedon wrote a script that was turned down as well. Yeah, don't go with the guy who has a film noir style influence and in dark storytelling, or the guy who literally knows comic books and geek culture like the back of his hand. Go with the guy who, uh, made a movie backwards. Ooh. But hey, I was optimistic at first. Batman has gone through several different interpretations. Even the Burton films I love so much had different aspects of them. So maybe this one wouldn't be so different, and I would love them just like, oh, you read the title of the video, you know what you're in for. So before we get to the movie itself, it's worth noting that Nolan's intention was to reinvent the character by telling his origin story, which he claims had never been told before. Uh... Nolan, you do realize there is such a thing as COMICS, RIGHT?! He wanted to do a Batman film that was more grounded in reality, and more about emotions and character. And he had the gall to say the earlier Batman films were all style and no substance. You cockamamie, tea-sucking little- Now, this is strictly a matter of opinion, but- WHAT?! Is he describing Batman or a drama movie? Batman was inspired by all the stuff Bill Finger and Bob Kane loved, which included gangster movies, detective comics, horror movies, and most specifically, The Shadow and Zorro. How can you look at these two characters and say that they weren't an influence on Batman? And the style over substance thing? I'm not sure what Nolan thinks he's talking about here, but the way I see it, Batman's style is his substance. Considering how Batman comics had such a film noir approach, it's hard not to associate that style with the Cape Crusader. But whatever, he wants to do something different with the character. I acknowledge characters have to go through changes in order to adapt with the times. But keep in mind these two things, grounded in reality and emotional. Cause we're gonna be referencing them a lot. For starters, this movie is called Batman Begins. And boy, does he begins alright. He doesn't even become Batman until an hour into the movie. Contrast that with Burton's Batman, where you see him in the first five minutes. You might say I'm nitpicking, but for crying out loud, half the time I don't even feel like I'm watching a Batman movie. Just look at some of these pictures. Do they look like they come from a Batman movie to you? I feel like I'm watching a samurai or kung fu movie for the most part. A really boring samurai or kung fu movie, I might add. So, in Nolan's idea of Batman, he's trained by Raish Al Ghul. No, I'm not pronouncing it wrong. The movie is. It's not Raz, it's Raish, which is how the creators of the character pronounced it. So, Raish training Batman. Alright, whatever. Didn't happen in the comics, but neither did Joker kill Batman's parents, so I guess I'll let it slide. But I'd like to point out that the internet was losing their minds over a black woman playing Catwoman, which you didn't have a problem with before, Yet, they're perfectly okay with an Irish actor playing a Chinese character. JUST THROWING THAT OUT THERE! So Nolan says that he wanted to do a more emotional Batman movie? Well, that's all well and good, hunky friggin' Dory and all, but it's hard to let any emotions set in when all of Nolan's characters are exposition machines! Yes, even Nolan's trademark babble 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 can't be left out of a Batman movie. 
It's like every time I watch this movie, I always forget so much of it because every character is on fast forward. I find myself checking my DVD remote just to make sure it ain't on double the speed. But it never is. It never is. It might say that's my fault for not paying attention. I do pay attention, but from what I remember, filmmaking is a visual medium. Showing, not telling. There's rarely any times for the visuals to set in and just let the emotions of the scene get to you. No, it always feels like blah, 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 babble, 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 exposition, 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 business, 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 numbers, 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 next scene. Imagine every single scene like that. Again, am I watching a Batman movie here or a really awkward crime movie? So when Bruce Wayne finally does become Batman, you're like, oh great, took an hour, but hey, better late than never. Now we can watch Batman being... Where were the other drugs going? Swear to me! Why? What do I look like a cop? <sighs> Y'all know what I'm gonna say. Everybody said it by now. Do I really need to say anything? Well, I guess I could add this. In Nolan's other movies, all of his characters act so subdued and unemotional. So, why is it that he was perfectly okay with Christian Bale hamming it up like that? It feels less like Batman, more like a bad Batman cosplayer. Every other actor who played Batman deepened their voice to make it more intimidating, but it was never turned up to 11 like Bale's is. So, for a movie that's trying really hard to be grounded in reality, can you really take a man running around dressed as a bat sounding like a little kid trying to be scary seriously? Doesn't that just take you out of the experience? Speaking of grounded reality, let's take a look at this movie's other villain, Scarecrow, who... <laughs> drunk kid walking home from the block party or what? Oh my god. <laughs> See folks, this is why the idea of trying to do comic book movies grinding reality is such a bad idea because, well, <laughs> okay. So Scarecrow is just that, a scarecrow. Okay, not really. He's a professor who specializes in making people experience their fears and he's always had cool designs. This one from the new Batman Adventures is my favorite. Come on, look at this guy. This is badass. I could see this working in a movie. Yet we got... Drunk guy with a potato sack on his head. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's too much. They rejected a Joss Whedon script for this? So yeah, with the Scarecrow being in this movie, you would think it'd be kind of cool for them to explore all the possibilities of his powers. We can finally see people's fears come to life on the big screen and Nolan barely does anything with it. To be fair, there are scenes where it shows people being affected by his gas, but all you see is shaky cam, people with glowing eyes, Batman turns into this thing for a few seconds. Oh yeah, what about Batman? What is his biggest fear? Batman the Animated Series had a great episode of Scarecrow called Nothing to Fear, where Batman is forced to deal with the thought of letting his parents down, and eats them up inside for the whole episode. That sounds like the kind of emotional weight Nolan is looking for. So, how does he explore Batman's biggest fear in this movie? Bats. He makes Batman afraid of bats. Batman is afraid of bats. That's it. I'm done. We're out of here. Pack it up, everybody. We're done. Show's over. Pack it up. Batman afraid of bats? Are you stroking me? It's not so much I care that Batman is afraid of bats. It's whatever. But the idea Nolan had an opportunity for some actual emotional quality of the Batman character, and he did crap all with it. Nah, let's just make Batman afraid of bats. Alright, next scene. Also, in this grand and reality Batman movie, Batman uses sonar to call a bunch of bats to help him escape in one scene. Is it too late to mention this movie was co-written by David S. Goyer? And maybe the action scenes in this movie would distract me from all the babble babble if they were fun to watch, but they're shot like the camera guy was jerking off while filming them. 
So eventually, the movie comes full circle when, right the hell out of nowhere, Ra's al Ghul shows up in Gotham and steals a device that can vaporize all the city's water supply, and he plans to unleash drunk potato sack head man's fear juice all over Gotham while using it, in case you were still wondering that this was a grounded in reality movie. Scarecrow also goes out like a whiny little crybaby too. Yep, one of the best Batman villains ever is taken out by a taser. Aren't you glad Darren Aronofsky's Batman's movie got rejected? So, eventually, Batman confronts Raish on a train, and it starts to derail, and Batman flat out says, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you either. And the train crashes with Raish still on it. <sighs> okay, I'll be fair. Yes, Burton and his movies did show Batman killing people. That is a fact I can't ignore. However, Nolan established in his own Batman movie that Bruce saved Raish from falling off the cliff in that one scene after he found out his evil plan. So Nolan establishes that his Batman doesn't kill, yet this climax is a big middle finger to that idea. Burton's Batman never claimed he doesn't kill people. He just believed in justice, so his Batman killing can be ignored. Because let's not kid ourselves, Batman did kill criminals at one point in the comics. But don't act like you're gonna have a character who doesn't kill people, but by the end say, yeah, just kidding. I'm sure there's a line of dialogue that explains in this movie. Somewhere. But I'm not watching this again to find out. So this was Batman's big comeback to the big screen, and I HATE IT! However, I'd be lying if I said there aren't some things I like about it. I will say, Bruce and Alfred's banter in this movie is my favorite part about it. There's just something natural and humorous about it that's missing in other Nolan movies, and is a great dynamic of the two characters that carries over here. The Gotham in this movie LOOKS like Gotham. It's all dirty and foggy looking. You can tell it's a city losing itself to crime. Just as I suspect a Batman movie would look. And I love Gary Oldman as Gordon. But it just felt like a director's first attempt to make an artsy Batman movie, and it just comes off as inconsistently toned, wordy, and long. I know this movie ain't that long, but it sure feels like it is. As far as Batman movies go, nah, I ain't feeling it. And you know what the sad part is? This is the one I like the most out of Nolan's Batman movies. <laughs> it's the one I like the most.